the industry leading tech giant juggernaut that is Apple, the exclusive audiophile creating company that is Hi-Fiman, bringing their best to the table with the AirPod Max and the legendary world leading Hi-Fiman Sesvaras. Not only is there a cavern in the price point difference, but there is so much to talk about. Welcome to Convince Me Audio. This intrigue of mine, whether a technology company that has to offer with all of its offerings and software implementation versus traditional analog built to precision high-end class leading headphones, can the technology giant even compete in the same stratosphere? Here, we are trying to find this out. It's the AirPod Max versus the world's best close backs and open backs of the industry. Taking a quick look, we get this understated, technology-esque, very iPhone-like box. Weighs quite a bit, very heavy lid. We do not need this. Taking the luxury brand fashion statement headphone out of the box is pretty plain and straightforward. You get nothing else within the box. This box is no display box like the Sesvara's. Leather, velvet interior, beautiful design. But you get this elegant, style headphone in this origami argument inducing case that is the leather pouch for the AirPod Maxes. This AirPod Max case is interesting. It's made of leather uh, with a magnetic clasp. Not only that, there are magnets inside to actually put the headphones into a sleeping mode where it shuts off antennas such as the Bluetooth so that it can save on battery life. Picking up these headphones for the first time feel precision made. They are extremely well built with high tolerances, absolutely exceptional design, very out of the ordinary. These look like the Apple Watch design on a frame to create a pair of headphones. The hi fi and Sesvaras are far more traditional. They just look cool. If you were to grab anybody off the street, they will know what this is. They will just consider this cool, not knowing what's inside. But for build quality, $6,000 and $550, they are comparable. The arms slide in and out with absolutely no friction, yet it doesn't flop around. No creaks, absolute perfection. Up top, we have this canopy that feels like a Herman Miller chair, so that it causes absolutely no hot spots onto the top of your head. For me personally, I found this to be a little bit less springy than I would like, so it did feel like there was some pressure up here after a while, but not too much. Dropping down to the cups, these beautiful cups are sand finished. They feel really wonderful. Then we have the control mechanism on the right hand side, which is the Apple Watch crown and the Apple Watch rectangular button with fantastic feedback, good throw and a clicky mechanism. This deals with the ambient acoustics, transparency mode and noise cancellation. And then we have the digital crown that with a satisfying click in the right ear cup controls the volume very, very well. It attenuates extremely well with perfect precision. I was actually surprised about this. Drop into these pads. These are magnetic, wonderful very much akin to the Empyrean, Meze Elite, and some of the other very, very high-end headphones. These pads basically can be changed. The material that's been used for these pads is a very much in reminiscent of a shower loofah material that feels a bit rough on the skin, and it did take me a few days to actually get used to it. There's a mesh canopy here to cover the drivers, and it slots back into place like so magnetically. The pads do feel very responsive, they bounce back immediately. It feels like more, there's air there rather than thick padding and foam. Uh, it's very, very comfortable 
and very isolating, but they don't breathe very well. So after about an hour's use in the UK in the winter, my ears did start to heat up. How this will handle in places like California and Florida, I have no idea, but these are going to cause some serious sweat problems in warmer climates because they don't breathe very well. There is an optical sensor inside one of the cups to allow you to lift the cup off of your ear and stop the music and place back on the ear to resume the music. Fantastic stuff. And there is a myriad of microphones inside and outside the unit. One, to calibrate your voice when in transparency mode so that it controls the level of your voice. And microphones to calibrate when listening to music for the DSP correction of what it can hear and to adjust on the fly. And obviously we have the microphones for the outside to let noise in or block noise out. There is about eight or nine of them and they do an outstanding job. This headphone is a Bluetooth headphone, Bluetooth 5.0. It has a battery life of 20 hours with a noise cancellation on and transparency mode on. And when you leave it on the desk for five minutes, it goes into a low yield standby mode where it's easily accessible across the Apple ecosystem, but it doesn't drain too much battery. So I left it overnight and it only drained 2% of the battery, which works out roughly about 29 minutes or so. So the whole hoobla about the case and not being able to switch it off really means absolutely nothing at the end of the day. But you can throw it in the case to shut off the Bluetooth antennas uh, so that it goes into a permanent sleep mode. I mean, they could have easily just allowed you to hold the crown button here like when it holds for Siri inside the case um, and switch it off. I mean, that wouldn't have been much of a hard job to do in software. Hopefully they will implement it in the future. We have a lightning connection. Oh God, this thing won't die. No MagSafe on these and uh, no USB-C. Unfortunately, you'll have to carry that cable around if you want to constantly charge these headphones. Inside the left cup, you have the logic board and a pair of H1 chips that deal with the DSP correction, the Apple integrated ecosystem switching mechanism and the fantastic pairing mode with the Apple devices where you bring it close and it detects it and bing bash bash bosh you can connect. This is a fantastically well constructed headphone. It feels luxury-esque, it feels incredible. These headphones on the table, the Verite Close that is a very much boutique-esque. The nearest thing I can say is this one the Focal Stellias. These Focal Stellias are a fashion forward design yet with absolutely no compromise in the sound quality. These rival some of the best. The detail is insane. So for beauty, I think they can sort of match. It's uh, beauty wise, these lot can compare nicely. Beauty wise, I think the Apple AirPod Max can rival the Stellias. For build quality and subjectively for design, I think it looks just as pretty, just very, very different. But it does feel like a technology-based design rather than a traditional headphone design. The Hi-Fi Mensa's Varas are as traditional as you're going to get. They're made of steel with a leather headband that is extremely comfortable. Next to Elite and Empyrean, I think they even surpass those. This is the most comfortable headphone on the planet. It's very understated. The pads are hybrids. You've got leather on the outside and this felt material on the inside. The driver inside these is a planar magnetic with stealth magnets and this one. The Apple AirPod Max contains a traditional dynamic driver. They are both very low slim profile, yet the high fi Mensa's Varas are obviously much, much bigger. I think the drivers inside these is only like a 40 mil. The specifications for the Hi-Fi Mensa's Varas is 60 ohms and 83 dB. They behave like speakers, so they need to be driven the same way you would drive a pair of towers in your listening room. Very, very different approaches. But we will approach both of these headphones in their own environment, starting with the Apple AirPod Max. The Apple AirPod Max is designed to be a love letter to the Apple device using people. Because when you use this with Android, I have tried it with the Samsung Galaxy S phone over there. Not only are you getting a worse sound quality, yet though the Bluetooth AAC inside this unit should perform identically, it does not. 
The vertical integration that Apple have implemented here actually allows for them, I am 100% sure, to send a more consistent signal that sounds a great deal better than using Apple Music on the Android device. I can't understand it. I wish I had a measuring rig to actually test this. But audibly, listening to Apple Music lossless on the AirPod Max, on the Apple devices, sounds incredibly better than using Apple Music on Android using the AAC Bluetooth codec, because it's the only codec on the system itself. I will call this a system because so much technology is implemented in the creating of the sound, not just from the drivers, but from the DSP correction, that it's like a computer constantly computing. We will get onto the H1 chip and the DSP correction later. The noise cancellation on the Apple AirPod Max is industry leading. I have tried the Bose, I have tried the Sony, they don't even come close. The noise cancellation is so incredible on the Apple AirPod Max by isolating sudden noises, droning sounds like an AC unit, and still not having any effect on the sound quality is nothing short of remarkable. The transparency mode in this headphone is the best there is. There is no argument about it. It's so good, so clean, that you will never take off your headphones when talking to someone like you would do with the Sennheisers, the Bowers and Wilkins, and the Bose and the Sonys, because the transparency mode just feels so natural, so tonally correct, it is just worth leaving the headphone on your head while you're talking to people and as they're talking to you. And if that screaming child on the plane starts up, you just press noise cancellation and boom, you're in your own little bubble. Absolutely fantastic. Each of those modes does have an impact on the sound. There's off, there's transparency, and there's noise cancellation. And each one does have an impact on the sound. Obviously, the Hi-Fi and Sesvaras are an open back headphone. They're designed to be listened to in a quiet environment such as this. And uh, there is no technology behind it, as in noise cancellation, transparency mode, or even the possibility of taking it on the go. You, uh, this is a stationary, device at a desk with a powerful chain behind it that will cost you around 11,000. So with the headphones, you're looking at at least 16,000 for the absolute best performance you can get out of it. With the AirPod Maxes, $550, Apple Music, and an iPhone, and you're done. So that covers the basics and the housekeeping for both of these incredibly good headphones. One is for the absolute dedicated audiophile, the other, is just for everybody else. Massive cavern in the price difference, but how do they sound? Does one cancel out the other? I don't think so. Because I've got all these headphones on the table and these get used the most. And that's for one reason and one reason only. And it can be summarized in one word. That is convenience. It is very easy to reach for these. It is very easy to switch between devices like a MacBook, Mac Mini, Apple TV, Apple Watch, iPhone. You seamlessly go from one to the other and the music follows you. So for example, if you're listening to music on your iPad and you're doing some work, then you go to your Mac and you go to continuity and you start that work on Safari, the music follows you and it doesn't even skip a beat. This implementation has just recently been improved because before it was rather janky, now it's seamless. And then on top of that, these can do spatial audio Dolby Atmos as well. Now this is a bit of a gimmick, yet it's a very intriguing and interesting idea where the gyroscope inside the headphones keeps track of where your head is and by maintaining the focal point of the audio there, in the center point, you can turn your head and the headphones will indicate that the sound is still coming from there. So it's as if you're watching a TV and you turn your head like this to talk to someone in the room. It's a very weird feeling. It also expanses the stage massively, but due to the resolution, it feels as though it's like a gimmick. It's definitely a wow factor. It's definitely not something why you should be buying these headphones for. The Dolby Atmos um, implements out of phase techniques to actually get different variations of height and uh, separation between different speakers within the same driver and it works well. It's just not how I personally would enjoy music because it sounds overly forced, overly engineered. It just takes me away from the experience. 
The Sazvaras obviously does not have any of these. All it does is bring the concert and the artist home to you. Who she is, who he is, will come and perform to you exactly at home. So on that note, let's break down the sound. Out of the box, the Apple AirPod Max is very, very safe sounding. It, it's a very safe tuning with a boosted bass, boosted sub bass, very punchy sound, very, very good tight sub bass, excellent control, very good resolution and nice separation. Not too bad at all. The mid range is recessed a little bit and the treble is extended. It's a V shape, basically the consumer level of sound. It's definitely instantaneously a wow factor for general consumers. They get the bass, they get the rumble, they get the punch and they get the attack. And they do not sound like a closed back headphone. They're quite spacious. Um, and the vocals are rather prominent, which is fantastic. And it's an instant wow factor. It's a nice sounding headphone, uh, but it's very, very mediocre and very average out of the box. Make a note of that out of the box, because these can be DSP corrected in audio accommodations under accessibility settings. And that is how we're going to review these headphones, because when you use it with an Android device, this cannot be done. You will cripple these headphones, not only for the ecosystem, but for the sound quality you get too. So in the audio accommodations, we chose balanced vocals or treble. I personally like the balance and I like the vocal, but the vocals more. So that's the option I've chosen and I've boosted dynamic range slight. And when you do this, this moth becomes a butterfly. This becomes a competitor to things like the LCD 2C and all the other mid-fi headphones on the audiophile market. And not only does it go to toe to toe, and I think because of the myriad of features on this, it actually beats it but I will break this down for you so that you can see why. The hi fi Varas don't have a sound characteristic as in boosted bass, mid forward treble and an EQ-esque sound design. The hi fi Varas provide you with instrument realism. It provides you with a stage environment as if you're there at a live concert. It brings you face to face with a singer as if she's singing to you personally. A very different approach to sound. In fact, it's so realistic, such good timbre, such excellent tonality that it makes you tired and want to go home after such an emotional ride. It's basically an experience when it's ran properly on its own chain here, for example, on the benchmark AHB2 and the Holo Audio DAC behind me and the gold point stepped attenuator. By the way, that gold point stepped attenuator alone costs one and a half times of this headphone. And it's basically just this volume control here in a bigger form. So let's break down the frequency response. But first, I would like to give a massive thank you to all of you. We have reached our 1000th subscriber. Thank you for your support. It's very much appreciated. Thank you to our Patreon members who get early reviews, who get to be in the private Telegram chat and speak to me via voice one on one. And we can discuss all of these headphones and everything else that's come to the channel that they want my hot take on. And you can join them over on Patreon. And thank you to my public Telegram chat. It's absolutely thriving over there. So consider joining. The bass region on the AirPod Max is punchy. It goes low. There's great texture. The sub bass is excellent, but it's elevated. So you really do get the rumble, especially for movies and certain tracks like movie soundtracks. It sounds absolutely incredible. I'm really, really blown away by the technical abilities of the AirPod Max bass because I just did not expect it from a Bluetooth headphone made from a technology company. It's quite astounding. It resolves very well. The mid bass is rather punchy, but elevated again with the attack a bit, a small 
tiny, tiny, tiny bit like the Focal Stellias, where it's got that massive weight, punch and impact, and it doesn't feel lacking. The upper bass region leads Credence to the treble region so that when you get the massive horns like you do in Inception, the movie, it doesn't feel thin and it tears the air and shreds the air. It's quite surprising. And when you choose the mid-range vocals and slight for the dynamic range boost, that mid-range gets filled out and comes forward a little bit. And as a mid-range guy, it's absolutely fantastic. The upper bass region does not impeach on this. The bass region on the Hi-Fi Mensa's Varas doesn't exist. But what does exist is the low end frequency response of instruments. Bound and tied to the instrument that is making the sound within the stage at that specific point in time. It does not cascade across the stage to infect other parts of the stage. On this, it feels like the entire stage is making the bass. On the hi fi Varas, only the double bass is making the bass. Only the kick drum has got the weight of the mid bass region, specifically at the point it's attacking. Sometimes you think, blimey, is the bass lopsided? No, it's just that instrument that has that power and authority and it localizes it to that specific spot so well, so textured, so layered, so nuanced, it literally feels like the real instrument is in front of your eyes. So there is no EQ balance on a Sazvara. There is just the instrument. Mid-range on the Apple AirPod Max, when you choose this setting, Previously, like I stated, it was understated. But when you fill it out with these settings under the accessibility setting, it's lush, it sounds really good, engaging, comes forward, the vocal is center point, and high resolution, highly resolving, very transparent. Yet, completely digital sounding, but it's beautiful. It sounds like a nice hi-fi system. There's good separation there, there's good texture there, but, the nuances of it, you will never think that this is, though it's very well tonally balanced, it's quite good timbre as well, but your mind will never go, oh, that instrument's real. On the hi fi Varas, mid-range-esque instruments and vocals are alive. They feel like reality. The texture of the voice, the crackle of the lips, the emotions of the singer literally almost can be seen on her face. The chest rumble, all of it is portrayed to you. When the singer starts singing and their mid-range-esque vocals is so enthralling, it feels so captivating, it's as if she's right there in front of you, sitting by the piano, looking at you, almost eye-in eye contact because it feels as though you can see her expressions on her face and you are lost in the music. You get the gut feeling. It's all in here. The high famous Asvaras reproduce reality. The AirPod Max digitally reproduce the mid-range. The treble region on the AirPod Max is very, very safe, very smooth sounding. You can throw any genre of music at this. I tried it with the metal, rock, hip hop, pop, everything, tr classical, and everything sounds nice. Everything sounds inoffensive. Even like harshly recorded metal tracks sound smooth. Lamb of God, Liquid Tension Experiment, A Perfect Circle, Tesseract, everything. All these metal tracks just sound beautiful, clean, clear, transparent, digitally reformed, very nice for on the go. Good detail as well, actually, and nice separation up top, but laid back and very, very relaxing to not to hurt the general consumer's ears because they're very delicate ears. On the hi fi Varas, it's the top spectrum of the frequency response. It's the upper end of instruments. The grit of the violin bow on the strings. The fingers running across the fretboard. The gentle tinkling of the bell with perfect cadence. Perfect resolution. 
not too much, so it's like this one where everything feels like it's under a microscope, and not too laid back like this where it feels like it's miles away and it's just bland and soft. When you hear a violin in real life, you don't go, ooh, the treble, but your ears pick up the treble frequencies because it goes right up there. And that's what the Sasvaras reproduce. The upper end of the spectrum of the human hearing in perfect form, never harsh, unless the track was very badly mastered and then oh god is gonna tell you. It's very, very, very real sounding. Your brain accepts the Sasvaras as reality. Your brain accepts the AirPod Max as, oh fun, music. All right, where's my coffee? When you listen to the AirPod Max, you will think about other things. Getting on with your day, doing your work. When you're listening to Sasvaras, it's the music that grabs your attention. So the best way for me to convey all of these in a visual form to you, let Convince Me Audio paint you a picture. For this analysis and for this soliloquy, I will choose two of my favorite films of all time, The Lord of the Rings and its counterpart, The Hobbit. When The Lord of the Rings is watched by somebody who is not into fantasy, they may not care for the elves and the Balrogs, but the soul of the story grabs their attention. Even the most skeptic person who doesn't like fantasy, when seeing Sam faced by a gigantic mountain whose friend is lying on the floor, no longer can go on, the insurmountable obstacle that's on their way picks him up and carries him up that mountain, brings tears to anybody's eyes, no matter who they are. The Sasvaras grabs the song, forgets about the planar driver, the design, the beautiful build quality, and just shows you the song. It brings out Sam carrying Frodo. It brings out Gandalf falling off of the bridge with his last words telling them to save themselves. It's unlike anything else you've ever heard when you listen to Sasvaras properly. In contrast to this, we have The Hobbit, a beautiful spectacle, very shiny, yet compare that Sam carrying Frodo to the trolls attacking the dwarves like a Pixar movie. You can't get into it. It's too digital. It's too unrealistic. Bits of it are realistic, and when the unrealisticness happens, it takes you out of the game. And your brain is not tricked. Your brain sees right through it. So let's talk about the problems with the AirPod Max sound. Like I stated, it's a nice sound. It's very safe and it's very good, and it actually becomes really good when you choose the EQ. But everything is done via DSP. Like that Hobbit movie, they used so much CGI that the reality was just taken away. Every part of the AirPod Max DSP corrected. It's really good. I mean, when you move the cups on your ears, no matter where you put it, there is no sweet spot. It all sounds absolutely fantastic, but there is too much of a good thing. Dynamic range is controlled, every aspect of it. Stage is controlled, every aspect of it. The sound is controlled, every aspect of it. Every time you turn up the volume, everything's in sync, it's perfect. And your brain goes, no, that's not how it works. It's very hard to be fooled by these. No matter how transparent it is, no matter how high resolution it is, and no matter how resolving it is, it's actually a very good headphone. There is no gap between instruments. You can't hear the floor of the stage. You can't see into the heart of the mix. Yet everything's clear and transparent right there in front of you. It's as though you're listening to a stereo system and there's a void between the instruments and even that void is almost just non-existent. It's bizarre. On the Sasvaras, you can literally almost see the ground between the guitarist and the drummer and walk through the difference. You can hear the floor, you can hear the ceiling, and you can hear the walls. It's like you're in that room, in that auditorium. With this, it just feels like little robots with little speakers holding it up in the air going, guitar now, bass drum now, bass now, singer now, and nothing else in between. It's the weirdest feeling. It's airy, it never feels claustrophobic, yet, 
There is no air up there. It's very contrived, very digital. And yet the timbre is okay and the tonal balance is okay. But it will never compete in the same league as a Sasvara for sound. So what's the conclusion to this story? Why did we even compare the Sasvaras to the AirPod Maxes? It's so that when a general consumer sees this review for the AirPod Maxes, knows that they are good, yes, but to understand what is out there in regards to audio, to give knowledge that you can get us experience as if the singer is in your house, and vice versa. It's to take the elitist out of Sasvara users and 1266 users and all the HE1 users and Shangri-La users and all the rest of it to show you that scoffing at consumer great stuff sometimes can be a detriment to your own life because these are convenient, these you can take everywhere with you, these will cancel out noise, these will let in noise, these are built beautifully just as well as the Sasvaras. The technology in this is incredible and it's a fantastic headphone. It's to teach either side the moral of the story that it's just about the song and how it's delivered. What would you prefer? A Sasvara that you can listen to one hour a night or an AirPod Max where you can listen to eight hours a day and run out with it? I'll leave that decision up to you. This has been a pleasant journey. I have some of the world's best headphones here. The Focal Stelia Closedbacks the Verite closed and the LCD XCs and the Dianas back there and Sasvara's here. And there's still a place in my heart and in my life for the AirPod Maxes because they are truly exceptional, just at slightly different things. So what is the difference between the Apple AirPod Max and the Verite closed? Apart from design, that is. The Verite closed are a handmade, beautifully boutique-esque, construction, comfort, and design. These ironwood cups, they have been lovingly shaped by hand. They sound wide, open, and unlike any other closed back you've heard, which is good. It compares to the AirPod Maxes. These don't sound closed back as well. It's, it's pretty fantastic. So they have got something in common, but those are in another galaxy in regards to sound compared to these. How about the XCs? I think the XCs from Odyssey is the closest to these. They are both transparent, high resolution, incredible bass, very fun. Detail on the XC is better, obviously, but it's an $1,800 headphone, and yet this can almost compete and sort of nibble at its heels. I think it competes with the Stellias in regards to its beauty, its build quality, its ease of use, and its function, because these can be literally driven by anything, like this little IFI Go Blue. The review for this will be coming soon. This is an exceptional little device that I've been using the Stellias with. Thank you IFI for sending this for the review. I really do appreciate it. Um, it's a very, very sweet little device. Um, the XCs can be run on the IFI as well, actually. Um, it's, it's a very powerful little device. So that can be turned into a Bluetooth headphone and they're very easy to drive. They can be driven by anything, which is wonderful. But they're $3,000. These are $550. So for price to performance ratio, these are very expensive for the consumer market, seeing as you can buy a Sony WXM4 and a Bose QC45 um, when you get the deals. I think both of them, unless you're in the Apple ecosystem, can easily match up to this. Why not? You can have two. So the no man land that the AirPod Max resides in is a really weird one. It's too expensive for the general consumers, doesn't have quite enough of a chop for the audiophile community. I mean, I think it does a little bit, but I'm crazy and I throw money at headphones. So completely different story there. For the person who wants one audiophile headphone like a LCD XC, they shouldn't spend $550 on these because that will give them a better result. But then they need an amplifier. They need a DAC. That's the problem. So these reside in a very, very empty space like the HomePods did and they kind of don't know who they're for. They're for the Apple enthusiasts, such as myself. They're for the person who has all of these headphones but wants something for convenience sake because he can't sit at the desk every five seconds. They're for somebody who's traveling a lot. Then again, you can have the QC45 or the Sonys. They don't have as much features as these. They're not built as well as these. So I suppose they do have 
some place on the market. You know who you are if you want these. I have just given you a massive description of why they're good. Whether that fits your lifestyle is a completely different story. Whether they fit your wallet, that is subjective and completely up to you. And I have also shown you what they're like compared to the world's best, what the industry has to offer, the high finance as far as. This is where the journey ends. This is the end of the road. This is perfection music, perfection at home personified. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Please subscribe, press the notification icon so you'll be alerted when the Stelia, VC and XC reviews go live. And join us over at the Audio Lounge private chat or public chat. I will see you next time. Peace.